Good morning. morning. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm not Irish, I just didn't want to get pinched, so (laughs) we're in green. This morning I'm going to be talking about the mercy of forgiveness. Um, In Luke 23, it says, Two men, both criminals, were also led out with Jesus to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there along with these criminals, one on his right, one on his left. And Jesus said, can you read this with me? Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots in fulfillment of a prophecy. These two criminals represent the two kinds of people there are. There are the people who have received Jesus' forgiveness and the people who have not received Jesus' forgiveness. But you understand, this thief on the cross, the one who he asked Jesus, he said, he said, I understand who you are. I know who you are. You're the Messiah. And Jesus says, today you'll be with me in paradise. The other thief did not receive the forgiveness of Jesus. He just mocked him. And consequently, Jesus did not say, today you'll be with me in paradise. But how does, how does Jesus forgive? How did Jesus forgive? He forgave completely. He forgave immediately. He forgave fully. Despite the fact that this guy was a criminal, Jesus completely, immediately, and fully forgave him. He wasn't baptized. He didn't do any kind of work. He never tithed. He never served anybody else. Jesus just forgave him and said, today you'll be with me in paradise. The two kinds of people, those who have received the forgiveness of Jesus and those who have not received the forgiveness of Jesus. For those who have received Jesus' forgiveness, for those who long to be disciples, we're doing a series now called More Like Jesus, talking about becoming disciples. To be a true disciple means we must forgive in the same way Jesus forgave. Immediately, completely, and fully forgive. That is what we're called to do. So how do we do this? How do we forgive? I I know some of you are probably thinking, why do we talk about forgiveness all the time? Because Jesus talked about it all the time. Because I truly believe bitterness, I think Pastor Ira said this this morning, it is the, probably the most predominant thing that holds people back from being fully who they're called to be, is a lack of forgiveness, holding bitterness against someone else. So how do we forgive? Luke 17.3 says, So watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must, say that word, must forgive them. And the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. The, the story is that, that Peter, he was coming to Jesus saying, hey, how many times do I need to forgive someone for the same offense? And, and he said, up to seven times. And Peter thought he was, he was doing a pretty good job by the, Like seven times is a lot for the same thing. Jesus is like, no, seven times in the same day, seven times, seven times seven. So one, one of the other parables says 70 times seven. That's how much we forgive, which ultimately means an infinite infinite number, infinite number of times that we forgive people for the same thing, not to mention all the other things. So how do we forgive? How do we forgive? First of all, we need to understand forgiveness doesn't mean that you forget. You know, forgive and forget, the old saying, that is not possible in most cases, especially if there's been extreme violation or an extreme offense. We don't just forget it, but we're removed from it. It's kind of like, you, you know, like a movie that you saw when you remember the offense, but you're not emotionally tied to it. We cannot necessarily forgive. So if you, if you have been hurt, offended, betrayed, rejected, violated by someone, it is possible to forgive them. It may not be possible to forget. Forgiveness does not excuse the offense. Forgiveness doesn't say, oh, it's fine. No. Some things that people do are downright wicked. 
They're evil, they're selfish, they're wrong. Sometimes it's a misunderstanding, but sometimes people do things to us that are extremely evil. Anybody agree with me? Sometimes people do things specifically to hurt us. Now, I, I, I often say that I don't think most offenses are intentional. I don't think a lot of people set out to really hurt or offend someone else. I think a lot of times... Unforgiveness comes from a lack of understanding, maybe, maybe a misunderstanding. Um, and the reason that we have to talk about this so often is because we are constantly in relationship with people who hurt us. Has anybody in here ever been hurt by anyone else? No? I want to live your life, princess. <laughs> Every one of us has been hurt. Has anyone ever been rejected by anyone? Anyone ever been betrayed by anyone? Anyone ever been, uh, had, had someone steal from you? Anyone um, had someone do a terrible violation against you? Has anyone slandered you? You ever been gossiped against? I mean, there's, there's a number of things. Have you ever been unforgiving because you misunderstood something? See, all of these are all instances that must be forgiven. There is not a clause where Jesus goes, nah, it's fine. You don't, that one was bad. You don't need to forgive that one. <laughs> Jesus never says that. He says, in the same way that you're forgiven, you must forgive. And I love here where it says in verse 5, the apostles said to the Lord, they didn't say, increase our ability to forgive. They didn't say increase our, our understanding. They didn't say increase our love. They said increase our what? Our faith. True forgiveness actually requires an act of faith. It requires us to trust that as we forgive, and the word for forgive means to release. It means to release our right to hold something against someone, to release our right to demand a pound of flesh out of them. It means to release their, them from our hook and to put them on God's and to trust that God is good and God will deal with them. Forgiveness is not fair necessarily. Um, I want to find this. There's a quote. Um, Timothy Keller, he wrote a book called Forgive. Why should I and how can I? And it says, forgiveness is a form of voluntary suffering. In forgiving, rather than retaliating, you make a choice to bear the cost. That's what forgiveness is is we choose to say, I am more concerned about standing right before God than I am about getting retaliation against this person. Doesn't this go against our flesh? Doesn't this go against everything we want to do? When someone wrongs us, what's our, what's our initial response? Oh, I am going to get them. Right? No matter how big or small it is, we, there is something in us that wants retaliation. We want justice right now. But always keep in mind we want justice for others, but we want mercy for ourselves. <laughs> well, what is mercy? Mercy is not getting what you deserve. And so when you remember Jesus on the cross, when he said, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing, that was the ultimate act of mercy, is to forgive us, to forgive us completely, and to set that example that it is possible. Because if there's anybody that had the right to be offended, it was Jesus. Right? You think about all the things that happened to him. Especially in his last days when he was, he was violated. He, he was beaten. He was abused. He was mocked. He suffered. He was spit on. He was crucified. Even though he was innocent. And yet, he's the guy who sets the example for how to show mercy in offering forgiveness to people who don't deserve it. Because a lot of times, I mean, just keeping it real, people don't deserve it. Right? But we, we think about this, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if they really deserve my forgiveness. No, they probably don't. But that's not the clause. That's not the little secret sauce. The secret sauce is it requires faith to be able to do this. Um, 
I want to say this really clearly. Just because you forgive someone doesn't necessarily mean that you need to enter back in relationship with that person. I think a lot of times people think, oh, forgive and forget, so then, you know, you act, you have to reconcile with this person, you have to get back into relationship. I do not believe that, especially if there's abuse. I do not believe we need to get back into a relationship with someone who is unrepentant and abusive towards us, okay? I heard this, this quote, trust must be earned, forgiveness must not. Forgiveness is a mandate. We must forgive in the same way Jesus did. You know, bitterness, studies have shown that bitterness will negatively impact your health. People who are forgiving tend to be much healthier, they live longer, and they're happier. Bitterness kills. Turn to your neighbor and say, bitterness kills. So I know I'm not talking to you, I'm just talking to the person that you just said that to, okay? Because I know you have all forgiven completely, right? Have you? Have you all forgiven completely? Bitterness will distort your vision. Bitterness will, will di distort the way you view another human being. You will not be able to see that person clearly if you're bitter against them. Matthew 7, 3, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? This is Jesus talking. How can you say to your brother, let me take that speck out of your eye when all the time all, there is a plank in your own eye? Jesus is not afraid to call people names. You notice that? You hypocrite. <laughs> You don't want Jesus calling you a hypocrite, I promise you. First, take the plank out of your own eye. Then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. This means, again, whenever we talk about confrontation, never, ever, ever, ever confront someone unless you have forgiven them. Do not ever have the audacity to go to another person and try to bring correction to them when you have bitterness against them in your own heart. Amen? Turn to the person next to you and say, she's talking to you. <laughs> so bitterness distorts our vision. Do, do you understand? You, you guys know what I'm talking about here. Can you think of instances in your own life where you're like, this person, you know, you have this bitterness against them and then you just view them as just the lowest scum of the earth, right? No matter what just because of your own issues with them. Bitterness will also open a door to the demonic. This will hinder your prayers. It will distort, again, this will distort your ability to hear the voice of the Lord. It will distort your ability to walk in freedom. 2 Corinthians 2.10, anyone you forgive, I also forgive. And what I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake. Now get this. In order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Do not be unaware of the schemes of the evil one. If you have bitterness against another person, that is opening you up to the demonic realm. And there is a demonic realm, I guarantee. There is, there is a, a realm of Evil and wickedness, which in Ephesians 6, it talks about how to fight against that, how to put on the full armor of God. But we need to understand that we are opening ourselves up to deception. We are opening ourselves up to uh, limitations. We're open, opening ourselves up to all kinds of demonic influences when we refuse to forgive. Remember where, what it said. Jesus said, we must forgive. Bitterness also defiles the people around us. You notice how bitterness is contagious? This is why gossip is so wicked, because you have bitterness against someone, and who do you want to tell? You want to tell everyone, right? <laughs> you want to ruin that other person. You want to paint them in a really negative light. But when we do that, what we're doing is we're defiling another person. Have you ever had the situation where someone came to you and gossiped about someone else and you picked up that offense and you decided that you hated that person too? Has that ever happened to anybody here? It's a really common thing. Bitterness is contagious. So beware. Beware of somebody who's bitter. And if you love them and you're in relationship with them, call them on it. 
If someone starts gossiping to you, say, hey, I'm sensing that you might have some bitterness, that maybe you need to work on that bitterness and resolve it with you and the Lord, right? Does that sound logical? Does it sound practical? Does it sound like something you're going to do? Elbow the person next to you. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 14, make every effort, every effort to live in peace with everyone. This is a lot of absolutes. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And here, verse 15, this is a good one to memorize. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and, what does it say? Defile many. It's so easy for us to pick up another person's offense. It's so easy for us to be offended on behalf of another person. We have enough offenses of our own that we need to deal with. We don't need to be picking up anybody else's. We don't need that. Ain't nobody got no time for that. <laughs> See to it, no one falls short of the grace of God, and no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and to defile many. You've seen this happen, have you not? I've seen it in families where someone will have, somebody will get offended by something, and so someone will take up an offense and be bitter against them, and they will hate that person. They will not talk to that person. They will have nothing to do with that person. They won't go to an event if that person's going to be there, right? You know situations like this. Hopefully, it's none of us in this room. But I mean, I've known people that haven't spoken for years. And then when you ask them, so what? What happened? Why, why are you so bitter against your sister? And they don't even remember. They just know that they feel this bitterness. Bitterness is so deceptive. It is so destructive. Bitterness kills. It, it kills us emotionally. It kills us spiritually. It kills us physically. Bitterness kills. And so today... My desire is that every single one of us would be able to start, if not complete, the process of complete forgiveness against the people that have sinned against us or even that we perceived have sinned against us. And again, I know you're wondering, why are we talking about this again? We talk about this a lot because it is the most poisonous thing for a Christian is to be bitter. You know, there's a, there's a parable <clears throat> where... There's this one guy, and, and his master forgives him billions of dollars in debt. And then the guy immediately goes out and tries to get the money out of his friend that owes him money. And, and Jesus is basically painting this picture as, how ridiculous is this? If you think of everything, if you know Jesus, if you have been born again, if you have received the forgiveness that Jesus offered on the cross, and you think about everything that he has forgiven you for, everything in your life, every single sin that you can think of, he has forgiven you. But then you're going to be offended because somebody didn't say hi to you? Or somebody still owes you money and you've sent him a Venmo request three times? <laughs> or they've done something horrible to you and you're still bound to them because of it? Because you cannot let go? or they deceived you, or they betrayed you, or they violated you, or manipulated you, all of it must be forgiveness. All of it must be forgiven. Every single thing, the mercy of forgiveness means that we are releasing people. We are releasing them and trusting that as the Lord says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. They are not going to get away with it. God is just. Do not be deceived. God is just. And he's calling us to increase our faith and to increase our ability to trust that when we release, when we forgive, when we let go of that bitterness, God will meet us there. And he will bless us for that. Bitterness prevents us from seeing our own forgiveness. I think bitterness, when we, we feel so self-justified 
in having something against someone else, and it prevents us from really truly grasping how much we've been forgiven for. Ephesians 4.32, this is a verse that, that essentially healed my marriage. This healed my marriage. Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. Now, this is the, this is the clause. Just as in Christ, God forgave you. I was so bitter against my husband. For years, I was so bitter against him. And I had, I was storing up bitterness. I was keeping track. I was keeping a record of wrongs, holding things against him. And, and to be honest, a lot of it was because of other violations from men from my past, but I put it all on my husband. And I had so much bitterness against him. And I was not even aware of it. I wasn't even aware. And we went to this marriage conference and they they quoted this verse, forgiving each other as, as in Christ God forgave you. And I was walking into the bathroom and suddenly the Holy Spirit said, even as in Christ God has forgiven you. And it was like, my life flashed in front of my eyes and I thought of all the things that I had been forgiven for, every single thing I had been forgiven for in my life. And I thought, how can I hold these stupid little things against my husband? You know, remember leaving his Kleenex laying all over the house or his socks? I talked about that last week. I mean, the dumbest things. I held the dumbest things against him. But I knew I knew at that moment I needed to release him, and it healed my marriage. It really healed my marriage. Matthew 6, in forgive us our debts. This is what Jesus said when he taught us to pray, as we have also forgiven our debtors. You know the, the way that we forgive with the same measure we use? Guess what? Finish the sentence. It will be used against us. So Jesus is like, okay, so you're going to forgive conditionally, but yet you want my unconditional forgiveness? Remember, it's complete, it's immediate, and it's full. It's complete. Some people are consoled by their unforgiveness rather than being free from it. To some people, it's their security blanket. Somehow it makes them feel like, you know what, I'm justified in this. I am justified in being angry and bitter. But we should never justify what should die. Never justify sin in your own life if it's something that needs to die. Um, I'm going to tell you a story now. Um, It's pretty heavy. I'll just warn you up front. Um, but it's real life. It's the real life story of a friend of ours that used to go to the rescue mission named TJ. Um, I'd like to show this little video of his kids. Um, if you could play that video. Hi, Daddy. I love you. Hi, Daddy. I love you. I love you. Go kisses. An arsonist set a fire, TJ's house on fire, and killed those two. And I asked TJ if I could share this story, um, and he, he wrote this to me. <clears throat> and I'm going to change the name of, of the woman who started the fire. The fire was set by a woman named Hannah. She was the wife of my ex-wife's boyfriend, She was very jealous and hurt that her husband had left her and was living with someone else. The incredible pain sent me back into addiction and depression. I found the rescue mission in Salt Lake, and from there I found the Adventure Church. It had been nearly two years since the blaze claimed the lives of my babies. Hannah was awaiting appeal. I was a wreck about it emotionally but then something miraculous happened. During the service, 
you had asked us to close our eyes and imagine the one person who had hurt us the most in our lives. You asked us to raise them up to God and to forgive them. Instantly, my hands dropped. There was no way I was forgiving her. Nope, not in this lifetime. I remember saying out loud, she doesn't deserve my forgiveness. After the service, I hung around because I was wrestling with this giant of a thing and I knew I needed help. You and I knelt down to pray. TJ and I knelt right down there. And as I poured myself out to God, pleading with him to allow forgiveness, the statement popped up again, she doesn't deserve my forgiveness. And God spoke to me as clear as the day. And he said, neither did you. I broke out laughing. Tears were streaming down my face. I looked up and I saw many of my friends standing around with me praying. I was here that day and I, I will never forget it. I will never forget that day. Fast forward a few weeks. TJ says, I got a phone call asking me if I wanted to speak in Hannah's appeal. I agreed and we were connected through Zoom. And there I was, face to face with the woman who set the blaze that claimed my babies. I was given time to speak. I expressed my pain, my anger, and my hurt. I went through the list of things that I would never get to do with my kids. The moments that she had stolen from me. And then I said a little prayer for some courage. And I looked straight at Hannah. She raised her eyes to meet mine. All I saw was tremendous hurt, a pain that matched my own. And I said, Hannah, I forgive you. The pain that you have to carry for the rest of your life is enough. I forgive you. And I love you. A few days later, I received another phone call from Hannah and her release counselor. She wanted to thank me. Because of my statement in court, the judge agreed to her appeal. And she asked me why I said that I loved her. All I could say was because Jesus loves you. So now we talk semi-regularly. She's doing well, but she does have her days where the guilt gets to be too much, and she will call me begging for my forgiveness, crying hysterically. I will again extend my forgiveness and show love by listening to her. We are planning to meet in November on the anniversary of the fire. This is real life. I mean, I will be honest with you, that day when I, when I saw TJ kneeling down here, and I had talked about forgiveness, I just remember thinking, this is impossible. How is he ever going to forgive this? But yet I knew. The standard is to forgive no matter what. The standard is to forgive, and so I just sat with him, and I watched as the, the weight of that burden lifted off of his shoulders. And I know that there are people in here who have experienced unimaginable pain and violation and betrayal and rejection and hurt. And I want to offer you the hope because of TJ's story, because he was able to forgive completely, immediately and fully, that whatever it is, whatever it is that's going on in you, you have the ability through the spirit of Jesus Christ to say in the same way, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. That we have the faith to be able to release someone into the hands of the Lord and to entrust them to God and to walk away and be free from the shackles that hold us back. You know, there's a, um, we do this program called the Steps to Freedom in Christ. And, and step number three is, is forgiveness versus bitterness. And 
what they recommend is that when you forgive, <clears throat> first of all, you start out and you ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you and to give you a list of the names and just start writing down the names of all the people that you need to forgive. Even if it doesn't make sense, just write down their name. And then little by little to, to take each name and to go to the point of actually feeling the emotion that you have so you truly understand what you're forgiving for. It's not just a blanket thing. Well, I forgive you. I forgive them. No, this, this goes to the root of it. It goes to the depth of your pain and brings it into the light and brings it into the light of Jesus so that he can walk with you and increase your faith and increase your ability to actually forgive and to release people. So you let yourself go there. You let yourself really truly understand the depth of what you are releasing to that person. And you forgive them till you're done. Till you know they are no longer on your hook, but they have been put on God's hook. So we're going to do that together today. And I, I don't, I'm not... Um, I'm not naive enough to think that, that we're just going to pray this one little prayer and then suddenly it's all over. But this is the formula, is to forgive them and to name the offense. Name the things that have hurt you and go to the point of understanding the depth of what you're forgiving. This is the formula. Can you stand with me? I'm going to just pray some short little phrases I'd like you to repeat after me. And let's get started in this process. You know, we will never accomplish everything God has called us to as long as we're held back by the chains of bitterness. And I am not in any way diminishing your pain or your, your feelings of violation or anything that you're going through, but I am telling you it is possible. We need to ask the Lord to increase our faith so we can forgive, so we can be set free. Amen? So let's just pray together. I'll just say a short phrase and you repeat after me. Heavenly Father, we come before you humbly knowing that we have sinned. We have all fallen short of your glory. I have fallen short of your glory. I have sinned against you, Lord. And yet you forgive. You have completely forgiven me for everything, past, present, and future. Jesus, you said you would increase our faith in our ability to forgive. So right now, Lord, I come before you with this, whoever the particular person, with this person, Lord. I acknowledge my bitterness. I acknowledge my unwillingness to forgive this person up until this point. Jesus, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for the mercy of forgiveness that you did not give me what I deserved, but you poured out forgiveness. And in the same way, Lord, I choose to forgive this person or these people for what they've done. Increase my faith. Increase my ability to overlook what they've done. To give it to you, Lord. To entrust it into your hands so I can walk free. So I can be forgiven. I forgive fully completely and immediately. And I trust, Lord, you'll increase my faith and help me to continue to forgive no matter how many times it comes up. You'll give me the strength 
and the mercy to forgive. In Jesus' name. If you are not born again and you have never been forgiven, I just want to ask you, um, Pastor Ira's over there by the cross and our area pastor, Big Jimmy, he's right there if you could welcome him. Say nice things about me to him. Um, he, they, they will be happy to pray with you if you have never been born again. You have never received the forgiveness that Jesus offered on the cross. You haven't been born of his spirit. Today's the day you can be born again. Go talk to one of those gentlemen over there. And I, I want to address another thing here too. I know that there are those of you who have deep, deep regrets. We talked about regret last week. Um, and just the power of, of regret and what that can do to us. And I just want to say this morning that it is possible for you to forgive yourself too. That is crucial for you to forgive yourself, to receive the mercy that God has offered you. Not to have a higher standard than God because he said, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. Forgive them. I forgive them. So I want you to think of that thing that you can't let go of and invite the Holy Spirit to come in with his mercy and to pour out forgiveness on you. It is possible for you to do that. And then there's another group of people, and I, um, this, is a, this is a theologically um, interesting, but there are those of you who have bitterness against God. He hasn't responded to your prayers in the way that you wanted, or he hasn't acted quickly enough, or he hasn't done what you've asked, or any number of reasons, or you feel like he abandoned you when he allowed whatever it was to happen to you, felt like he wasn't there for you. I'm telling you, you can forgive the Lord too. You can forgive the Lord, but let yourself go to that place emotionally. Let yourself feel it and pour out your heart to him. He can handle it. I think God can handle it even if we yell at him, even if we cuss him out. And I'm not recommending that, <laughs> but I'm just saying he knows your pain. He is a God of compassion. And he is gracious. And he is compassionate. And he's slow to anger, rich in mercy, and he will forgive you as you forgive him, as you release God from your own expectations and your own standard whatever you think it is that he's doing wrong. Amen? All right. I know it was a heavy one today. I just want to just want to encourage you, continue to walk in forgiveness. I don't think forgiveness is a one-time thing. I think you have to consistently, anytime that irritation comes up or the annoyance or somebody mentions that person's name and argh, all of a sudden it's all stirred up in you. Any time that happens, even mild irritation is a sign of bitterness. Deal with it. Do not be bound by bitterness. Amen? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you can do this. God bless you. See you next week.